So you think you have a pretty good grasp of the game. You know which comes to play and you're looking to go one step further. Well, let me show you five different ways of min-maxing your game to reach the next level. So the first way that I'm going to show you on how to min-max your game has to do with the Tome of Traits. This is highly relevant considering that right now in every single game we have a dragon egg that will include a Tome of Traits and you should definitely sometime, at least sometimes try to get the most out of it. Here we have a nine turn egg which will hatch at 2-7. So in this specific scenario what I ended up doing is I collected a Lulu and a Corky on my bench. Then when we hit the PvE round, just for this single round, we will include them for the fight since we're going to beat the Crux no matter what. What this will do is that uh, Corky and Lulu, they have the Yordle Enchanter and Twin Shot trait and none of them can appear as an emblem for the Tome, but they still count towards getting tailored emblems. Uh, what, what this means pretty much is that I, I will pretty much have a guarantee from Innovator Clockwork, Scrap and Bodyguard, I have a guarantee to get one of them. So I'm minimizing the amount of <laughs> bad traits that I'm not looking for and maximizing stuff like Clockwork or Innovator that I actively want. And once the PvE round is over in stage 3-1, I can pop the tome and hopefully get the result I wanted for. Uh, this works especially well with the 9-turn egg, but I think you can also do it with the 4-turn egg that hatches at 2-1. Now next up, I want to talk about Augment Manipulation. Now, as you might know, that the units that you place on your board in stage 3, 2 and 4, 5 can have an influence on the possible augments to appear in your selection. In this example, we have Celestial Blessing, Duet and Ascension. Now, Blessing and Ascension are so-called neutral augments. They can always appear, but Duet isn't. Duet as an augment can only appear in your selection screen if your Socialite trait is activated. It's a little bit of an odd case because you only need a single unit, in this case Dinar. But still, if you're looking for Duet in Stage 3-3, you should make sure that you have a Senna or a Nar or a Seraphine on your board. And if you don't want this type of augment to appear, then you should do the opposite. You should remove them from your board in Stage 3-2 to make sure that they cannot appear. Now obviously this sounds very complicated, but here's a very simplified rule. Augments that enhance a specific trait usually can only appear if the trait is activated on your board before the selection screen. So for example, if you want Sniper's Nest to be able to appear in stage 3-3 then, and you're only running a Caitlyn, then you should look to include an Ash to activate the Sniper trait, otherwise the, otherwise the augment can't appear. And the same is for very VIP. If you're looking for very VIP, then you need to have the debonair trait active, otherwise it can't appear. So for example, if you're in stage 3-2, you're playing innovators and you're looking to play Jin and you really want this broken stopwatch or sniper's test, then you need to make sure that the clockwork trait is activated and the sniper trait is activated, otherwise these augments don't have a chance at appearing. And you don't have a guarantee at getting them, it's just opening up the possibility. Our next trick has to do with debonairs. So here's the situation. You, you're playing debonairs and you specifically want to play Talon Carry. You already have one Zindra on your board, but now all of a sudden you have a VIP Zindra in your shop. But you don't want her as a VIP, you want the VIP Talon. What you should be doing in this situation is you should buy the Zindra and then sell her. What this is going to do, it's going to block the specific VIP Zindra slot. Every single Zindra in your shop from now on cannot be VIP anymore until you buy a new VIP. Now this doesn't really increase the chances of you finding the VIP Talon, but it will allow you to collect pairs and it will allow you to find upgrades while you're looking for the specific VIP that you wanted to play. And this is definitely something I think a lot of people are missing about the VIP mechanic. Our next example regarding min-maxing has to do with positioning and specifically with Blitzcrank. So right now in front of you, you have a pretty straightforward syndicate opener. You have Darius, Syra, Ash and Blitzcrank. But where you put this Blitzcrank is actually super relevant for your early game. Now in the first positioning, we put him slightly above our backliners. So what this is going to do, if the opponent, for example, has a Nocturne, we're just going to give this Nocturne an Infinity Edge and we're going to pretend here that he is from the enemy team. So this Nocturne will now jump either here or here and he wants to attack our backliners. But because the only hexes that Nocturne can land are surrounding the Blitz rank and the bodyguard trade is activated, this will cause Nocturne to swap his aggro towards the Blitz rank and therefore protect your backline carries. And the other positioning is that you put the Blitz rank slightly behind the Darius. What this is going to do is that the Blitz rank will pull a backliner behind the Darius 
and this causes the Darius when he ults to hit more targets and therefore also heal himself for more and deal more damage, which just overall makes your fight more efficient. You can also do this with a Morgana if you want to. Uh, obviously the Morgana wants to heal herself for more, but still it's pretty useful to have more people in the Morgana ultimate and get a chain CC going from Blitzcrank into Morgana. And this can help you win some fights, so definitely pay close attention on where you put your Blitzcrank. And for a last example regarding min-maxing, let me show you something that is completely useless. Here we, the, here we have the augment, lifelong learning. Now certain augments in the game will give you an orb with an extra unit, in this case the Zyndra. So if we pick up this orb right now, we have a 100% guaranteed chance to receive a Zyndra. Uh, but the thing is, this Syndra right now is not pulled out of the champion pool. She is technically still in the champion pool until we pick up the orb. Which means is that if we are looking to 3-star the Syndra, or if you're in general, if you're looking to reroll a unit to 3-star, and you have this specific unit in an orb from an augment, then you can wait with picking it up to very, very slightly increase your chance at receiving the champion in your pool. But for the most part, this isn't worth it, but I thought it was fun to share. But yeah, that is pretty much it for me. I hope you learned something and see you the next time.